There's a couple of things I want you to think about when it comes to being able to effectively plan your week. The first thing is that your planner needs to be functional. It needs to be a resource for you to be able to get the things done that you need and have to get done. Yes, you can decorate your planner and you can make it cute and have stickers in it, but function needs to be your top priority. If your planner is overloaded with stickers, you have no room to write the things that you need to get done, you're less likely to use it. Now, another thing to think about is that size truly matters. <laughs> Your planner size matters. If you have a planner that's too big, and it doesn't matter, you could be a productivity machine. You could be knocking things out left and right and being super productive the entire week. But if there is a ton of white space left over inside of your planner, you're going to feel like you didn't accomplish anything. And it's going to constantly make you feel like you're never doing enough. When really you are just in your planner, it looks like you haven't accomplished anything. Now on the flip side of that, if your planner is too small and you don't have enough room to write everything, that's gonna get overwhelming because then you have sticky notes, you have pages of to-do lists in the back and you have different things here and it just, it becomes overwhelming. So if your planner is too big, you're gonna constantly feel like you're never able to do enough things or that you don't have enough plans, right? Or if your planner is too small, it gets a little bit overwhelming. Me personally, I like using a classic size happy planner. This is my favorite, it's a happy medium. So it's not too small, but it's also not too big. There's plenty of space in here for me to write. I will have a list in the description box of planners that are sized like the classic if you don't wanna use a happy planner. I do recommend the happy planner though. All right, your planner needs to be a priority and size matters. Okay, I'll quit laughing at it. But from there, how do you effectively plan your week? We're gonna start with life categories. So, all of us have categories inside of our lives, right? Some examples would be a personal category, a work category, family category, um, a goals category, church category, and each of us are going to have different categories. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by writing those categories down, and then from there, what we're going to do is make a list of things you need to plan for for each of those categories. Now this is not a to-do list. These are just general items that you need to plan for within that category. So for example, for me, I have a personal category and the way my mind works is my personal category is anything that I need to get done. And this includes my goals. So for example, under my personal category, I would write down things like filming and editing for YouTube, creating and planning content for YouTube and for Instagram. Another example would be like your work category. So knowing what days you have to work, what times you have to be there. I have two jobs, so I'm a nurse. I work in a hospital and I also do home health. So it's very important that I'm tracking both my home health patients and my schedule for at the hospital. Another category that I have is a family category. So this is where I write down anything pertaining to my husband or my son. So this can be appointments, any events. My kiddo does Cub Scouts, so we do things around that. Anything he has going on for school. I like to keep kind of track of my husband's golf tournaments so we don't double plan for things. Or if we do, we can make sure we have a babysitter and things like that. So. Make your categories and then underneath each category, list out the things you need to plan for those categories. Please do not skip this part, it's very important. There's a couple of reasons. One, we tend to forget to plan for things and sometimes that throws a wrench in our plans. Sometimes that can eat, has even messed up the entire week for me and I've had to replan everything and it just kind of creates a mess. This isn't a foolproof system, but once you have your categories and you know what you need to plan for those categories, it's gonna help you plan for your week so you're less likely to forget something. There are gonna be times that we forget to plan for things and that happens, but this decreases the likelihood of that. The second reason that this is important is because it gives you a starting point. Have you ever sat down to plan and you had no clue where to start? You're overwhelmed, you feel like you have 110 things going on this week, not enough time to do it, and you just feel stumped. You're looking at these blank pages with no clue where to begin. This is a part of that starting point. Writing down the categories, knowing what to plan for in each category helps you get started with actually making your plans for the week. Okay, we'll come back to the categories in just a minute, but what I wanna talk about right now is the power of threes. This is a planning system that I learned from Michael Hyatt. I don't think he calls it the power of threes. I actually don't remember what he calls it. Um, I'll have resources to it down below because he has amazing resources on his website. So I'll have those linked down below, but in my mind, I call them the power of threes. So what this is, is you have your goal for the year, for example. Now I know you're watching this right, well, I'm posting this in October. I don't know when you're watching it, but it doesn't matter what time of the year it is. I'm just giving you a rundown of how this works. So you have your yearly goals, you break your yearly goals down into quarterly goals. Your quarterly goals get broken down into your weekly big three, 
and then further broken down into a daily big three. So what you need to do is think about what are the things that you need to accomplish in the, this quarter. If you haven't sat down and figured out your goals for the year, or maybe you did have goals set for the beginning of the year and then you kind of fell off track with them and life got the best of you, it happens to all of us. But take some time and think about what it is that you want to accomplish for the remainder of the year. And then break those down into, let's just say monthly goals, because there's not quite a quarter left in this year. If you have quarters left in the year when you're watching this, break it down into quarterly. But let's just say monthly goals. So you have your, your overall goals and then what are the things you need to do each month to hit that overall goal? And then break that down into weekly. So the weekly big three. What are three things you can accomplish this week that's gonna help you move closer to that goal? And then finally, break that down even further into your daily big three. What are the three things you need to do today to help you reach that weekly goal which will ultimately help you reach your overall goal. Your daily big three is basically priority planning. It's setting three priorities, three absolutely have to get done tasks for the day. And then once you complete those tasks, you're able to do whatever else it is that you need to do. This is where dishes and laundry and things like that come into play. I said daily three. This is not daily five or daily 10. This is not a massive long to-do list. These are three small actions that you can take today that's going to help you move closer to your ultimate goal. You have to know what's important to you. You have to know what your priorities are and you have to plan for those. Because if you don't, if you don't plan for your week, I promise you somebody else is gonna plan it for you. And that leaves us unhappy, stressed out, overwhelmed, feeling like we're never moving forward. The whole point of being able to effectively plan your week is so you can move forward in your life. Quick side note for my fellow mamas out there. Your kids do not have to be at the top of your priorities list. That does not mean that you don't love them. That does not mean that they are not important to you. I just want to remind you that you are more than capable of being a mom and accomplishing your goals. You're more than capable of raising them babies and working towards your goals. This is why we're planning for three small actions. This doesn't mean you don't feed your kids. This doesn't mean that if they need you, you don't go help them or, no, none of that. Knock that nonsense off. If they need you, you will be there in a heartbeat, right? Yeah, that's because they're important to you and that's because you love them. Setting priorities and planning for your goals and working towards your goals does not mean that you don't love them babies any less. Got it? Say yes. Say yes, Ashley, I got it. Okay, now you have your weekly big three, you have your daily big three. Let's bring those categories back into play. So you have your categories, you have the things that you need to plan. So what you're gonna do is start planning for day and time specific tasks. For example, if you have an appointment this Wednesday, you need to write that down first before you write anything else down other than your priorities. We can go to a doctor's appointment and still accomplish our priorities, right? Or maybe for you, you start with your work schedule. I always start with my work schedule. When I work at the hospital, I work 12 hour shifts, so that dictates a lot of what I am and am not able to do. So I always write my work schedule down first. Actually, when I work at the hospital, I don't have a priorities list for that day. I work 12 hour shifts, I get up at the butt crack of criminy, I'm gone from daylight to dark, well, right now in this time, it's dark to dark. When I get home in the evenings, I shower, sometimes cook dinner, sometimes I tell my family to fend for themselves, and then it's chilling out and going to sleep, especially if I have to work the next day. And you might have a scenario like that in your life where not every single day you're planning for priorities, but for the most part, most days of the week, you need to set your priorities. Priorities are set, then you're going through those categories and you're looking at the things that are day and time specific. Review the list that you made in each category, making sure that you don't miss anything. Again, that's kind of your starting point for all the things that you need to plan for. So you've gone through each category and you've planned for whatever needs to happen each day. The last thing you might wanna do is make a general to-do list. So this is what I do. I create a to-do list that's not day or time specific, just a general list. Let's say it's a Thursday and I've hit my three priorities for the day and I get to that evening and I have nothing really going on, we're not really doing much, I can look at that general to-do list and say, oh, hey, I was wanting to clean out the pantry, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna get that organized and cleaned up. Or I could even say, you know what? Forget the pantry, forget the laundry, forget all of it. I'm gonna sit and chill and hang out with my family 
and all of that stuff will be there when I get to it because I accomplished the three most important tasks of the day. That's the beauty of priority planning. When you get to the end of the week after doing that, it feels incredible. You feel so stinking good. You feel like you've accomplished so much and you feel like you can move mountains. All because you decided what was important to you. You decided what you was going to plan for and you chose your daily three and you know the different categories you have in your life. Okay, planner babes, that's how you plan for an effective week. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can drop them in the comment section and I will see you in the next video.